What's up everyone, my name is Cody Engel. I am a software engineer and I'm finally ready to put my software engineering skills to good use and win the Powerball by writing a Python script. So as I say, time is money. So let's just get into it and I'll walk you through what I'm gonna do. So the first thing that I wanna do is look up the Powerball winning lottery number history. And I want it to be a JSON file because I want to read that file. Looks like this one might have that information for us. There's a JSON file. Can I open it? Yes. So I can open it and it looks like the file has a ton of information for us. Looks like it has some winning lottery numbers. So we're in business. The next step is to figure out how to do Python because I've never done that before. I think VS Code is what a lot of people use. So we'll go ahead and try that out. The next thing for me to do is to create a file and we will just call this powerball.py because I believe .py is what Python files end with. And the first thing I want to do is just make sure that I have Python set up correctly and know that I can run it. So I'm just going to do print hello world. We will go ahead and run it from their terminal. If I can find their terminal, you can tell I don't really actually use VS code that often. All right. So now that I finally found the terminal, let's type in Python three and then powerball.py and nothing, right? Oh, I didn't save the file. Um, let's try that again. Cool. So remembering to save the file, it now works. So the next thing to do is to actually figure out how do I download this JSON file because that's really the first step is getting that JSON file onto my machine so then I can start reading all of the numbers and figuring out which ones are most likely to win. So this lets me know how to download something over HTTP. This looks like I can probably copy and paste it over here. We will do that. So there's our request. This I think will save it as the file name. So actually instead of that, I think what I would probably want is this, this to be called powerball.json. And then instead of this being an MP3 file, I actually want that to be the JSON file that we found at the beginning of this video. So we'll paste that in, save the file, and then we will go ahead and rerun it and we'll see if it downloads the file, which over here on the this side looks like it did download it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out this because I actually don't need to keep downloading the file over and over again while I'm working on this. I don't know if they have any rate limiting in place, but it doesn't really make sense for me to constantly download this every time I'm rerunning the script. The next thing that I really want to do is be able to read the JSON file. And this article from Geeks for Geeks looks like it will probably do the trick. So let's go ahead and get that into the app now. First up, I just want to do file and then equals open. This will open up our file and our file is called powerball.json. Then I want to load all of the Powerball records from the JSON file into just a variable so we can make use of it. Then because I'm a good person, I'm going to close the file, essentially just we don't need the file open anymore, it's already in memory. And then probably the last thing I wanna do is actually import JSON because we need to use JSON to load JSON. With that in place, I can't really test it out quite yet, so we're just going to do another print to make sure that it's loading the JSON file correctly, and we will go ahead and rerun it by doing our Python 3 powerball.py, or just pressing up on the keyboard to rerun the last command. That looks like the JSON file all right, so we're one step closer to winning millions of dollars for doing pretty much nothing. So the next thing that we want to do now that we know that we can actually load the JSON file and view everything is we want to extract the winning lottery numbers from the file and then we can start doing some Python magic with it. The first thing that we want to do is actually figure out what the numbers are. And so from looking at the file, it looks like there's this data key. And then from there, it looks like we have the Powerball numbers along with a like multiplier. We don't need to worry about the multiplier, really just need to worry about the numbers themselves. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. From looking at the Powerball Lottery website, it looks like one, two, three, four, five. And then the sixth number is the Powerball. The next thing that we wanna do is actually go through and like I said, categorize numbers. So Powerball number occurrence is what we could use. And this is just gonna be stored in a map. I think that's how you do a map in Python and then regular number occurrence will be in its own map as well. So this way we will kind of break things up into regular numbers and then Powerball numbers. And essentially what we're going to do is count up how many times those individual numbers occur. And then at the very end, we'll figure out which ones occur the most often. And then that will give us the best odds of winning the lottery. In order to kind of categorize all of these, we'll have a Powerball record in Powerball records. Um, coming from the data key. And the next thing is to get the Powerball numbers, which will be a Powerball record. And it needs to come from the occurrence in this array of objects. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. But 
because the rays are zero indexed, this will be at index number nine. Back over here, we will do nine. And then just to make sure that works, we will print out the Powerball numbers and this will let us know, are we on the right path? So running this again, yes, it looks like we are printing out just the Powerball numbers. We're only getting those, that is what we wanted. So the next step is really figuring out how many times those individual numbers are occurring absent the Powerball because that's treated as a separate number but the other numbers, they can only occur once. So that's kind of why we're grouping those together. So let's go ahead and get that done now. Similar to last time, we'll comment out the print because we don't need that anymore. And what we want to do is basically have this regular numbers array. And that's going to be our Powerball numbers. We will split on the space character. So this will create an array for us based on this string of numbers, but it'll have all the numbers in them. We don't want all the numbers. We only want the first five. So. It's pretty simple for us to do um, essentially just regular numbers array dot pop that will remove the last number from the array and then similar and we're just going to print out the regular numbers array make sure that it only contains five numbers basically at this point in time we rerun it we have one two three four five that's what we want and we will also notice that it is an array which is what we want as well then we will start tracking those numbers and the way that we want to do that is by doing four regular number in our regular number occurrence and then if regular number in regular number occurrence essentially saying if this number already exists then we will grab the current occurrences from it because that's what we're doing. We're tracking the occurrences. And then since we have the occurrences now, we can do occurrences plus equals one. So increase it. And then we will just do regular number occurrences for that regular number. And we will set it equal to the occurrences. That's now updated by one. If it's the first time that we're seeing it, then we need to have a case where we're just adding it to the map. So we'll just do regular number occurrence. And again, regular number, and we will set it equal to one. We can now print out our regular number occurrence, see how that's working for us, and it's not. And the reason why it's not working is because this actually needs to be regular number array. So reading from our array and putting them into our occurrence. Rerunning the script now with it working, we can see, all right, so 11's occurred 117 times, 21, 118 times, and so on, so on. Looks like it's counting up the numbers like you would want it to. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to sort those regular numbers based on their occurrences because we basically just want the ones that occur most often to figure out which ones are most likely to be picked. So we will have a regular number occurrence sorted and it'll be equal to this sorted function that Python has built in. We will take our regular number occurrence, grab the items, so the actual like how many times it occurred. We set this key to be equal to this Lambda that I found on Stack Overflow. Not 100% sure how it's working. I'm thinking it's just sorting it basically by the second value, I think. And then because I want these to be sorted from most occurrences to least occurrences, we want it to be in reverse order because by default it will sort it basically by lowest to greatest. So we say reverse equals true and then print by our sorted and then we will go ahead and run this to see if it works and open it up. We can see this 32, 132, 132, 36, 131. So yes, it does in fact look like it is sorting it the way that we want it to. Now what I want to do is basically the exact same thing except for the Powerball numbers. So this is going to be pretty fun. It's just a bunch of copy and paste. So the first thing I'm going to do is come back up here and I'm going to set this value to be Powerball number. So the way that the pop function works, so not only does it remove the last item, but it returns that last item too. So we can remove it, then we can store it into this Powerball variable, and then essentially we're just going to do this exact same thing, except instead of for regular number, it's going to be for the Powerball number. And so you can see here, we're checking if the Powerball number already exists in the occurrence and increment by one. If it doesn't, then we just create a new value. So the exact same thing, like I said, that we've been doing, copy and pasting is always fun. And then our sorting can also be done with the magic of copy and paste. And then we just go ahead and we print our Powerball number occurrence sorted. And you can see it does in fact look like the Powerball numbers are sorted from greatest to least. Now at this point, we're pretty much done. Just have a couple more finishing touches. So if you've been enjoying this video up until this point in time, please go ahead and smash the like button. Be sure to subscribe if you like this style of content because there will be more of this in the future. And let's actually finish this up and, and go win the lottery. So what I want to do is basically write these into their own list because at this point in time, we can't really do a ton with this. We know that 24 and 65, like that's the number and then the occurrence, but I really only care about the number. I've already sorted it into that correct order. And so essentially I just wanna transform this 
sorted map into a list that only contains the lottery numbers. The next thing that I wanna do is create a new variable called winning ticket, because this is going to be our winning ticket number. And I want this to be created as a string where each number is separated by a space. And to do that, we basically have this space and then dot join. So we're going to be joining some numbers together. And the first set are going to be our regular number occurrence sorted by occurrence. That's a mouthful. That's what she said. That's what she said. Um, and we're going to take the first five of those numbers, and then we're going to add that with our Powerball number occurrence sorted by occurrence. And we only want the first one of those. And then the last thing we want to do is just do print and winning ticket. And then I, this is like a weird string formatting way with Python, but it's basically going to let us inject the winning ticket number that we have. And drum roll, please. And it didn't work. And the reason why it didn't work is because I used the wrong value for Powerball number. So, you know, measure once, cut twice, whatever basically what I'm doing, I guess. So our winning Powerball, or our winning ticket is 32, 39, 36, 23, 59, 24. And let's go ahead and see how often that one has occurred for us, at least just for like the first five, because it's probably occurred a couple of times. It's the most popular number. So we go back over to our Powerball JSON, we do Command F and then search and um, no, no results. I guess they usually do give the results sorted by number. So maybe like 23, and we'll get rid of that. 39, no, okay. Maybe, maybe, no, no. We're just going down the list. Okay, so we had 39, so 23, 30, 32, 39. That one has occurred. Has 36 occurred? No, no. So th th this is a little embarrassing, but let's, let's actually, hold on. Let me look at some numbers real quick. I, I really can't believe that into this before, but let's do odds of winning power Powerball. Hey, look at that. One in 292,201,338. So it's, it's pretty fair to say I'm, I'm probably not going to win the, the, the Powerball. Hopefully my employer still wants me to work with them. Um, but the really great thing, if you made it all the way to this part of the video is even though you're probably not going to be able to win the Powerball using this Python script, you do have some exposure to writing a Python script now. And if we just look at salary.com, Python is paying about $97,000 on average. But I mean, I know just from working in the industry, you can make a lot more than that and you can still be writing Python making a lot more than that. So even though you didn't win the lottery, you have exposure to programming. And if this was something that sounded fun and enjoyable, well, maybe just keep at it. And within no time, you'll be able to get a software engineering job. And if you wanna learn about the different companies that you can work for as a software engineer, check out this playlist next. It will talk about some really good companies to work for, the different salaries that you can expect, the different benefits, all of that good stuff. And until next time, it's been great. And if you do win the lottery, uh, just, just remember who, who gave you the Python script. Um, maybe, maybe send me like five bucks.